Thank you for joining us today. We're uh, happy to have the topic to talk about modern mainframe KPIs, which are accessed through CompuWare's uh, latest product introduction, which is Z-Advisor. Z-Advisor is an analytics tool designed to improve the quality, efficiency, and velocity of your developers within an organization. Uh, I'm David Rizzo, uh, Vice President of Product Development at CompuWare. Uh, presenting with me today is David Kennedy, Solutions Architect here at CompuWare. And we'll get started into our KPIs. All right, thank you, David. Now I'd like to jump into a live demonstration of our key performance indicators within the Z Advisor product. When you're brought into the Z Advisor product, the first KPI that you see is efficiency. And what I'd like to explain here uh, is how to read these charts and what the different colors mean and uh, how you interpret uh, each of these KPIs and how you can use them to in improve your mainframe development processes. So on the left, uh, you'll see the efficiency roll up of 74%. Uh, this is CompuWare's uh, internal data. Uh, we're looking at a percent of time spent on innovation. So this is uh, all development work that is being done within CompuWare that isn't considered a bug. Uh, so um, moving from left to right here, what we see uh, on the blue line is our moving average of, of innovation. Since CompuWare four years ago decided to move from waterfall to agile, we see a jigsaw uh, type of pattern or sawtooth pattern here. So uh, at the beginning of every sprint, uh, we're working on innovation, and the back end of every sprint, we're working on uh, the bug bugs that have been identified or anything uh, that could be uh, maintenance. And so you can see uh, we kind of have an upper threshold or ceiling around uh, 85 uh, or so percent. The orange line here is a monthly roll-up, so kind of starting to show you uh, week over week, quarter over quarter. Uh, and if you expand the timeline uh, in, in the advisor, you can see year over year. So you can start to see a trend. Uh, but we've also added this red line uh, at the tail end here that shows the trajectory and in which direction uh, that you're heading. Uh, so I showed this information to uh, David Rizzo, uh, and like, I'd like to him to take over and talk about what this means to him and how he could uh, use this information to improve uh, engineering processes at CompuWare. Thanks, David. And so when I take a look at this graph and think about the efficiency of the organization, I look in terms of uh, CompuWare has uh, a couple things that we work on, one being new innovation, which is new products, new feature functionality, and then there's uh, other things that we do, such as keeping current with technology and also fixing bugs within the product. And uh, typically, we see the number what we see is our innovation percentage is about 74% and 25% of our time is spent on other activities. So the number comes out to about the average. When we look at the graph and we see the sawtooth pattern where we're spending more time on fixing bugs than we are on doing innovation or more time on innovation than fixing bugs, it alternates back and forth and ultimately gets back to that even line of somewhere around you know, 74, 75%. So when we look at this to be most efficient in the organization, when we're doing our agile sprint planning, we want to plan to be 75% innovation, 25% on our bugs and other tasks that we have to do. And if we plan for that, then we will be consistent in ensuring that we're working on the most important things, but working on them consistently and provide a consistent uh, cadence that our customers can depend on to see those different things. So the, as we go down in um, fixing less bugs, eventually we're going to have to fix them because they're going to be there. So creating a consistent pattern and getting this to a straight line means we're optimizing the resources and efficiency of our teams. All right, thank you, David. So the next KPI uh, that we want to discuss uh, is velocity. There's multiple components uh, in the makeup of velocity. And uh, the first two that I'd like to talk about are elements deployed and containers deployed and the relationship between those two. So we do have the moving average 
Uh, we do have uh, the week, uh, the monthly uh, average, and again, the roll-up of, of the average amount of elements that are deployed uh, to production. And so production at CompuWare means that it's staged and ready uh, to be deployed at the end of every quarter uh, to go out to our customers. Uh, CompuWare has a great track record of, of releasing new features and functionality quarter over quarter, uh, and this is how uh, that gets broken down. Uh, we've moved to from a to having monolith-like uh, architectures to more uh, smaller microservice-like architectures. So we'd like to see. Uh, this elements deployed and the grouping of those within containers uh, to be dispersed evenly and, and adequately for each of the products uh, that CompuWare releases. Uh, so I'm going to turn it back over to David to talk about uh, what he sees uh, within the elements deployed and containers deployed uh, metrics that make up the part of the Velocity KPI. Thanks, David. So when I look at uh, how many elements or containers are being deployed, I want to look for anomalies or things where we could be introducing more risk into the product portfolio or where we're doing, when we do a lot of work at uh, one time, that, uh, that can introduce risk. We expect, as we look at that, I would expect to see an increase in the number of elements and containers deployed as we get close to our quarterly launch. So every quarter we're going out, and because many teams work together to create a new enhancement or new feature, there's uh, a lot of elements that come together at one time. Though they're being uh, tested individually, actually get to what we would consider production would be closer to the quarter. When I look at the the top graph and see a big anomaly where we have over a thousand elements uh, deployed at one time, that causes me concern as to why I would be be introducing so much change. When I investigate that, I realize that that corresponds with the launch of a, a new IBM subsystem release, and our support for that was put into multiple products, and that would all go in at one time. So that anomaly is correct in that seeing that it's something we would expect and inter isn't introducing risk, it's introducing some new functionality. But if we were to see an anomaly like that that was when we didn't expect it, it gives us the opportunity to look and see if there was uh, something that was happening within our products or something that was put in that could introduce more risk or that would require more testing or more focus. So it gives us an opportunity to see that we are consistently doing work over time, and this should be fairly consistent. The number of uh, elements or containers we deploy should be consistent sprint over sprint um, based on the cadence of the team, so we're able to look and see if we're going in that normal cadence. Perfect. Thank you, David. One thing I want to point out uh, is uh, the, the green dial here, uh, and this is customizable uh, depending on your environment. Uh, so for here at, at CompuWare, uh, around 260 is good for CompuWare. Uh, when you have access to the advisor, these are items that you can adjust uh, that uh, fit your needs. Uh, so uh, very, very customizable in terms of uh, what's good, ranking um, each of these KPIs within your organization. As we move down, uh, there's additional components of velocity, and in, and in this view, what we're looking at the me is the mean time to resolution. Uh, so we're looking at a bug uh, when it comes into the development organization. How long does it take uh, for us to resolve that issue? Uh, when we initially put these together, we had them all in one chart, and it was very uh, difficult to discern uh, simple bugs versus complex bugs. So what we did was we broke it down into three percentiles, the lower 25th percentile, the 25th to 75th percentile, uh, and the last uh, section, the 75th percentile, or what we call the uh, looking at bug complexity. And what we like to see uh, and what we're starting to see is this grow up and uh, to the right. But going back uh, to the lower 25th percentile. These are typical uh, bugs that uh, take less than uh, one day to resolve. The 25th to 75th percentile is 
uh, a, a typical or normal bug. So what we can start to use this KPI and metric for is uh, helping with sprint planning and estimation of when work is going to be complete. Mm -hmm. uh, so around nine days. So if we know how many uh, average bugs are coming in uh, to the organization, we can combine that with the amount of innovation that we have uh, for planned work, uh, and we can more accurately predict uh, when we can complete everything that should be done, uh, whether that be innovation or um, maintenance. Uh, this last one I'm going to hand over back to David Rizzo to talk about uh, why this is moving up into the right and why uh, this is a great thing uh, when uh, working in an agile organization. Thanks, David. And yeah, when we talk about MTTR, typically, you know, the time to resolve an issue we would expect to go down over time. And as this is showing for that uh, last percentage of bugs, it is actually going up. And if you take this in comparison to the actual total number of defects that are in here, this is the time on average, but if you were to have also with that the number of defects, as we see time go on, we see more defects that are going to fall into that lower graph there that shows that the time is going to take longer. And the reason that's good is our bugs are getting more complex to fix. And that's an indication to me that we have improved our automated testing and our testing overall that we find what we we categorize as those easier, simple bugs that should never escape. So by improving our testing and improving how we do uh, our internal work, we're finding more of those bugs. We're introducing less bugs to the field. Unfortunately, the bugs we introduce to the field are taking us longer to resolve because they're more complex issues, things that we didn't foresee or that are uh, based on environmental or load uh, scenarios that happen at uh, larger customer sites. So there's an indication that um, those, the more of those bugs that we get that take longer, the better we're actually doing in our process of testing and flushing out the, the code before it's released. All right, thank you, David. So one last thing I would want to point out um, when we're looking at uh, a few of these KPIs is this red line that appears. And what this allows us to do is see the relationship between each of the metrics uh, across the, the three KPIs of velocity, quality, and efficiency. And what we're doing here is trying to visualize if there's any uh, causation uh, across them. Is there a certain metric or a certain KPI that's affecting another one to move up into the right or down into the right? Uh, so you can start to ask questions. Uh, of the groups that are responsible uh, for each of these components uh, to understand uh, what the data uh, is telling you. The last one as we move down uh, to the bottom as a quality KPI and a simple representation of fallback. So this is looking at uh, flow of an artifact uh, moving uh, through the, the organization of software development lifecycle. And if it gets to a stage where it does not pass a quality check, or a certain test has failed that it falls back to a previous stage and a developer is having to potentially do rework. A simple word cloud to the right is representing uh, based on size uh, within the word cloud which uh, component has fallen back the most. Uh, so very simple representation of uh, uh, these anomalies uh, within uh, the software development lifecycle for a component. So that completes uh, the, the three KPIs of velocity, quality, and efficiency, and we'd like to move over to uh, any questions that there might be. Thanks, David. Uh, my name is Spencer Hallman. I'm the product manager for Z Advisor, and I am going to ask some questions today. So uh, first question that came in is, can I look at the KPIs by an individual development team? Spencer, uh, absolutely correct. Uh, you'd be able to look at the team, the organization level, the team level, uh, and individual uh, users within teams or custom groupings of individuals uh, that uh, you can supply uh, into our formula uh, that show the contribution of the selected user teams or parts of the organization uh, in respect to that KPI. Thanks, David. 
So I think you may have covered this, but I'll ask it again. Um, are the KPIs customizable, or am I stuck with what CompuWare defines as you know the thresholds? And I think that this is referring back to the uh, to the to the gauges where they were green or red. Sure, that's an excellent question. And the the KPIs and uh, some of the the metrics within those are customizable uh, based on your site and how. Uh, you do things uh, in your environment, recognizing that everyone isn't exactly the same, so you can customize those metrics to you. Thanks, David. I, next question, I've heard that the advisor uses machine learning in the background to create recommendations. Could you give us some insight into that? Uh, absolutely. So. When we ingest this data uh, on, uh, within our cloud environment, uh, we're analyzing using different algorithms and different models uh, that are looking at the relationships of our products, uh, the usage of our product, and how they relate uh, to each of the key performance indicators of velocity, quality, efficiency, and each of the metrics um, that are children of those parent uh, KPIs. And we're constantly adjusting those models uh, to look uh, for insights and patterns. And once we identify those patterns, uh, we use those as templates and samples uh, to train the models to start to look for similar-based patterns uh, within your data. Uh, so looking at deviations from a template or deviations from a certain pattern that we've identified and trying to make close matches. Once we do that, uh, the advisor is able to provide recommendations on how to lean out uh, the mainframe development process to be more like uh, the template that we've defined. Thanks, David. So we are located in Europe and need to comply with the GDPR law. Could you tell us how you comply with GDPR? Uh, absolutely. Uh, so we had a third party uh, named Verisafe uh, audit uh, the Z Advisor architecture, uh, workflow, uh, and data protection uh, privacy components that we've put in place. Uh, there's 30 articles uh, within GDPR compliant uh, to be GDPR compliant, uh, and we've satisfied uh, each of those. Uh, we have a full report that is downloadable from CompuWare. Uh, to review each of the, those components of GDPR and how we uh, satisfy those requirements. Thanks, David. Okay, last question. Um, how can I see my data in the advisor? Should I call support? So to see your data in Z Advisor, you just need to provide it to us. There's a couple different options to provide it to us, either uh, through FTP or you can live stream it to us uh, so that that data can be put right into Z Advisor. And you should contact your account consultant or you can reach out to customer support to get in touch with them and get set up so that you can start seeing your data. Thanks, David. Well, that, that is the end of the questions. So I'm going to turn it back over to you guys. Okay, thanks, Spencer, and thank you for the great questions. Uh, certainly there are probably more questions that you have, and we, we just touched on a few of the KPIs that we have. There are additional KPIs, and they continue to be uh, developed and added as we get feedback. So we appreciate your time today and look forward to seeing your data come into us and working with you with Z Advisor.